take it. Barry. Shoot it. He does. Oh! He's got 34 points. He's just playing a game for himself out there. Another monster game from Jason Tatum as the Celtics get the win 122 to 114. It's Celtics post game live. Tom Giles, Chris Forsberg, Tatum finishing with 39 points mm -hmm. in the win, including those two threes to beat the shot clock both times. Great reaction from Deuce on that one as well. <laughs> uh, but, Chris, this, this felt like a game that was sloppy at times, mm -hmm. scrappy certainly. Mm -hmm. But the Celtics able to kind of hang on and just keep the keep the Jazz at arm's length and, and hang on for the win. And look, coming off of last night, coming off the emotional high of winning in Milwaukee, the, you knew this one wasn't going to be like a whole lot of style points. Good for them for just kind of grinding through. It was an ugly game for long stretches. It got weirdly chippy at the end. Tony Brothers decided to make it the ref show out there. And you get to the finish line of a win. Keep that momentum going into a three-day break. You pull within a game and a half in the standings, and you just feel good about it. The only thing that went wrong, Tatum didn't get to 40, which would have eclipsed Larry Bird. Plenty of more chances ahead. But he was great. And Tommy Giles, i got to give you credit. You were talking about a pregame. What would be something that could be sustainable off of that Milwaukee game? And you said maybe Tatum's three-point shooting. It hasn't been good post-All-Star. It hasn't been good all season, really. For him to continue his hot shooting beyond the three-point arc is such an important thing for this team. Yeah, five of eight from behind the arc for Tatum in this game. And, uh, again, that's something that you want to take uh, going into the final four games of this regular season so you can launch it right into the postseason. He says he's got plenty more t chances to catch Larry Bird or, or to surpass Larry Bird in those 40-point games. But... Four games left during the regular season, but getting into Jason Tatum's game tonight, and it was extremely efficient. 12 of 17 from the field, 10 of 11 at the free throw line. All while being blitzed for most of three and a half quarters, where they were just sending two defenders at him, trying to get the ball out of his hands. He made the right play in those instances. But more importantly, even late in the game when he just wanted to score, he was like, you know what? This Utah Jazz team isn't stopping me. Euro stepping straight through Kelly Olynyk right there. And uh, so, like... I just go back to it. When his three-point shot is falling, he, I mean, he's dangerous every single night. We know that already. It's just another level when that three-point shot is falling, and this is when he makes 39, 40-point nights seem very, very easy. His efficiency lately is spectacular. Over the last two nights, I mean, you see the numbers at the bottom of the screen there. I mean, 79 points on 24 of 35 Ooh. in the last 36 hours. That's incredible right there. That, that's, that's what you want to see from your superstar. Just very different games, though, from what you very. saw the last two nights. You know, I mean, it's, you know, Tatum imposed his will to kind of just take the air out of the Milwaukee mm -hmm. Bucks last night. And then tonight it was giving the game what it needed at the time that it needed it. You know what I mean? He did, it didn't feel like it was forced at any point. What do you think he can get up to in the MVP voting? I think he's fourth. I think that you're looking at, you know. Fourth even if he hadn't had these two kind of crazy games? I, I mean, he'll get maybe – a few more votes, but I still mm. think you're going to see Giannis probably ahead of him. And, yeah. and, and it comes down to Jokic and Embiid. Who and, it, are, and it's so weird because like uh, last night we were sitting there and if, if Giannis has a big game, you're probably thinking Giannis slides back into the conversation with, with Doncic. Uh, Don, Doncic. Doncic has faded from it. With the, uh, Embiid and Jokic. And now you're sitting here and thinking, like as I'm watching something, wow, is Tatum going to make like one last push over this final week to be kind of considered top three. Probably, as you said, too hard to get up there. But if there was any question if he was four or if you know, anyone else could get into that spot, sure feels like he's cementing that. And even that is progress, coming off six, then now to four if he gets there this year. Uh, it's just the, the, the slow creep, and I suspect it won't be long before we're talking about Jason Tatum as a legitimate top three MVP guy. Yeah, I mean, well, we were for most of the season right. as well, right? Yeah, especially the first half of the season. Meanwhile, with the win, the Celtics, when you look at the Eastern Conference standings, now a game and a half back in Milwaukee because they took care of business tonight, which they were supposed to do, but take any win you can when you can. So with four games remaining, the Celtics, one and a half games back, the Bucks, who are going to play Philadelphia on Sunday. And after uh, they see Philadelphia, they'll go to Washington, those pesky Wizards mm. for some Tuesday yeah. night. Uh, and then they've Not got the, the Bulls. The Grizzlies could be a tough one for them, and then they finish up the regular season against the Raptors. I love your optimism, Giles. My, my whole thing is it comes down to rest. And, like, that point in the year, are the Grizzlies resting? Are the, are the, the, are the Wizards? You know, it's, it all depends on what's happening out there. So, But by the time we do the show next, we'll have a better idea. We will have a better idea. Eddie House joining us now. And, uh, Eddie, what did you think of tonight's performance, in particular Jason Tatum coming through with 39 points on a very efficient night?
Well, I, you could see that they had a little fatigue. They got in today at 2 o'clock, right? That's hard for any player to turn around that fast and turn around that clock after traveling and try to get it back going. And you could see it took a, a, a little while for them to really get going. And in the second half, in particular, I've seen them play a lot better defense. And I think it was kind of led by uh, uh, Damn, uh, Blake Griffin and him getting out on the floor and that's why he won the Tommy War. but we're talking about particular Jason Tatum I just love the way that he was efficient and it starts with being aggressive and trying to get to the basket and not settling for threes we know he hadn't been shooting a three particularly well before uh, last night's game where he went eight for ten and he goes five for eight just super efficient 12 or 17 from the field and then he was engaged in, with with the rebounding as well so I thought he played a ph phenomenal game a great floor game took what the defense gave him because they were trapping as soon as he came over half court and it seemed like Joe Missoula wanted to stick with their game plan up allow the trap pass and play four on three on the backside. All right, Eddie, we get our poll up on the screen. Who will win the Tommy Award tonight? See uh, some early votes for Blake already up there. <laughs> they might have got tipped off a little <laughs> we bit. We might have tipped it a little bit. Scan the QR code. You can, even if you know what's going to happen, you can take it. Eddie, have you ever seen a player go from being like a superstar in this league to doing what Blake does in terms of like diving on the floor, taking charges, getting chippy with guys and laughing at like the transformation to me is, is unreal of what he's become. Yeah, no, he does the dirty work, and he does all of the dirty work. And it's unfortunate tonight he took three charges, but they got two of them got called because somebody fouled out on the perimeter before he was able to take the charge. But he was all over the place. He took the first play of the game, he took a charge. So, I mean, to be able to go from being a superstar player to understanding, hey, whatever the team needs from me, and this is exactly what he gives us, is exactly what the Celtics need from him. The minutes that he gets and the and the uh, performance that he gives is exactly what, what the team needs, keeping plays alive and things like that. So it's extremely hard for superstars to do that, to go from being a star player and carve out a niche doing something else that you weren't particularly accustomed to doing and got you success your whole career. All right, well, this being Tommy night, you know, mm -hmm. celebrating Tommy Heinsohn uh, throughout the night and at the Garden as well, we did have to go back. We found archive video here. Ooh. This is Eddie House earning a Tommy oh, point give me that. against the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Getting saucy. And Woody Allen with the M1 on the other side. Yeah, that's that's my favorite one right there. Look, look how fast. Uh, oh. That's that. F and then the dime and then the uh, finish. That's an underrated highlight right there, y'all. <laughs> well, I mean, look, oops. And then look at that. Right on the dime, though. Around the back on the dime and in the dunk. There's a lot of fabric. That was a great sure. play right there, man. That was great. Yeah. Well, we're going to get that on social, and that way it won't be the most underrated timing point of all time because we're going to get that plenty of plays, plenty of clicks uh, of that video right there. Eddie, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you guys take care, man. Have a good show. All right, sounds good. You want to come back for Plizos? He might. You never know. You never know.